I think the biggest challenge we face as um, practitioners is absolutely demonstrating scientific correlation between an investment in leadership development and an actual physical return in the business. I and mean, that's the holy grail of what we're all looking for. My approach is really to measure what you can measure. I mean, the interesting thing about leadership and developing leaders is leadership impacts absolutely everything in an organisation from its operational effectiveness to its reputation in the market to every conceivable key performance indicator you can imagine is correlated to, to leadership. So for me it's measure what you can measure but also measure what's important. So again look to your strategy for that. What is your organisation trying to achieve? Is it trying to be the best? Is it trying to be the biggest? Is it trying to be the quickest? Is it trying to be the smartest? And then look for data that can that you can see that can move in a positive direction in that space. So, you know, interestingly, I mean, organisations I've worked with before have really been interested in linking their investment in leadership to things like retention and employee engagement. Or measure employee engagement then. <laughs> and see if you've seen a, a move in the dial. So measure what you can measure and measure what's important. I think it's about trying to put a number on that. Um, you know, in my experience, um, executives listen to numbers. So if you, if you can see an improvement in, for example, engagement, well, you know, explore how that could be having a, a financial impact on your organisation. I mean, organisations like Gallup and, and the Corporate Leadership Council have done so much research in, in that space that by leveraging some of their methodologies, you can start to explore what that could look like in your own organisation. In my experience, I think that we're still obsessed with problem solving as a methodology for change, and I, I'm personally far more aligned with a more appreciative way of approaching change. So to sum it up simply, you know, the main assumption in change management is that we can find out what's wrong in the organisation, fix it, then the organisation will be better. You know, that's the underlying assumption in, in problem solving techniques. And that seldom works, and in many cases, you know, it's, we have money, we didn't have the right people involved, or we didn't have the right strategy, but you know, rarely do I see that fundamental assumption being challenged, and for me, effective change management is about understanding what is working in your system, what, what works, and grow that, replicate it, because you know, for every time we see something not working, there is an equal example of something that is. Now, I mean, I was personally impacted by that in the very first HRD program that I ran, which was all around diversity, and approached it in a problem-solving methodology, because that was the only way I knew at that time. And then when we measured the impact through an engagement survey, the issue was worse. Because we, we'd sought out to try and find, figure out what, what was wrong, what, 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 what people you know, happy with, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And lo and behold, we made the issue bigger than it was. So for me, you know, it's about understanding where, where, where's it working and what can you learn from that and what can you put in place to replicate that or improve things. It depends what the organisation wants. So talent can be, for me, is very dynamic. You know, it's what is required at that time in an organisation's life cycle or, or its strategy. So what we want as talent today might be very, very different to what we want as talent tomorrow. So for me, to be succinct, talent is situational. It, it depends what the organisation's after. I think the other um, factor as well is, you know, there's, there's two schools of thought, you know, do, do people have potential or, or don't they? And if they have potential, it, can it be, you know, quantified and can it be measured? And some of the reading I've been doing recently, which has really kind of resonated with me, is this concept that, as an individual, your potential is discretionary, that you may choose to bring your talent and your potential toward an organisation, and you may choose to switch it off. So 
the engagement agenda becomes very important because a significant part of talent is about a person's aspiration and about their engagement with the organisation that they work in. So if, if that's not there, the, the potential that they have may not be brought forward.